passion for me and I started getting back into my artwork and that was something I had let go of in high school. So when I got back into it and I was, again, the, the three day fast, I just knew I wanted to sketch something. And with my artwork, it never turns out to be exactly what I had in my head, it just comes out. So when it was coming out, it was all of these emotions that just came on the paper. It was the description of the, the painting, the sketch really, because it's not a painting. The sketch is of me with short hair to represent the jaguar with the spots and the teeth are coming out and the eyes are closed and the lashes become whiskers and what really sticks out the most is that she's crying blood. I'm crying blood in the photo because it's me angry, upset, hurt, feeling like I was lied to, just all of these things that I started feeling as an activist and going out and speaking, all the things that I was seeing and what I wasn't seeing, and that was results. And to know that it was now, it it used to be a white issue when it came to AIDS, but now it's a black issue. So when you have me who's 19 and was already vulnerable, and now you have included me into this fight, I felt like I was lied to. With all the information that I was giving and that I started seeing, I felt like this country, the system that's structured around HIV and AIDS does not want to see a cure and you don't want to help me. You don't want to help us. So it was all these emotions that are coming out through this on this paper and it has been a symbol for me when it comes to this fight because it's everything that I feel now still to this day of how I feel and the awakening. I gave it the, the title for the awakening because that's exactly what happened for me. It was like the, I woke up to what was really going on around me when it came to HIV and AIDS and I was mad, like pissed, like really, really upset about everything that was going on. And the fangs and the jaguars, one of my favorite animals, I have it on my, my shoulder now Black Panther's always been my favorite cat, but it's now time to bring out the fight in me. Like, you have really brought out the animal that is in me, and I'm ready to go at this. And that's where the teeth come out, and it's the tears, and it's the whiskers. It's like, it's like the Michael Jackson thriller. Like, <laughs> the moon comes out, <laughs> and I turn into this, this animal that has been inside of me that's been wanting to come out, and you have let it out. And that's exactly what it turns into. That's what that's what the awakening is for me. And I am I'm still awake. And the fight will always be there. I'll always have these jaguar spots. I'll always have the Black Panther. And you just saw one on the table, the Black Panther. And that's just the fight in me, man. They brought it out of me. So it's gonna it's gonna be there. It is definitely gonna be there. When you say they brought it out of you, who's they? They <sighs> put in quotation marks. They who they are and is, is the specialists and doctors who don't respect my decisions. When I say medication and they're still forcing me to take the medication, the ones who in the very beginning of this didn't acknowledge the dissidents who had questions and were going against the theory. What you did do was quiet them. You've swept that whole topic underneath the rug as far as the answers that could lead to the end of AIDS. They are the ones who you come into, me working in this field, I know that there are people who come from the state, who come into our neighborhoods, who wanna know about the challenges when it comes to testing and stigma and discrimination, but you all still perpetuate the stigma and discrimination in our neighborhoods. You don't know anything about who lives in these populations that you are targeting for HIV and AIDS to promote medications. We are dealing with poverty, we are dealing with malnutrition, we are dealing with real life issues, but those issues are not addressed. It's more about you wanting somebody to be put on medication. And there are so many layers before we can even think about our health. We have to think about how we're gonna eat and how we're gonna to get to a job or even find one if we can, you know? There's so many other things that could be, that we need help with but they are not helping in the structure, the system that has been put together around this whole issue that could easily be solved, that could really be solved. There's no reason for it to be 35 years of this epidemic when you've had questions about it since the beginning. And I mean, come on, it can't, a virus can't be smarter than 35 years of scientists.
period. So there's there's not enough effort in this. What if you could make something happen just today about what this passion you have? Like what is the transformation? Maybe that's it. What is the transformation you want to see? The transformation I want to see? I want to see I want to see patients really take charge of their health. I really want to see there. There's always been this concern about patients and a, a, a specialist and the consumer relationship. Patients and their doctors. They always want us to have a good relationship with them. But when the question is brought up in the doctor's office and you you shut a patient down, or you already have this assumption that they're dumb or they don't know what they're talking about, you've already destroyed the relationship between the patient and the doctor. The doctor destroyed that relationship with that patient. And if we're not given the freedom to be who we are, for one, if I know at one point when I was smoking weed, I was told I couldn't smoke weed or it was recommended to me not to smoke weed. But at that time, it was helping with my depression that I was getting from looking at a pill every single night when I was taking it. You know, that would bring me back to me feeling like I was a burden to my parents. So if we could at least at least give us the respect to have some kind of freedom. If we don't want to take the meds, let us go on with that decision. But again, if there's problems with nutrition, talk about nutrition. If there are issues in the South, there are so many issues that come to just living life that we're not necessarily taken care of. When you go to New York, you're completely taken care of. I mean, from your housing to your food to transportation, you're completely taken care of. But when it comes to the South, where numbers are supposed to be there, we're not taken care of. So one, give us the freedom. And if you're not going to give us a freedom, give the tools for us to actually survive. I mean, really help us out if you're looking to end this. Because there's so many things you could be doing that they could be doing again that it's it's really not done. Mm -hmm. So at least take that step. If you want to see a change, take the advice that we give you as community workers. When you come into the neighborhoods to ask about the challenges, the advice that we've been giving you every five to ten years, actually apply them. Please and thank you. Ha, 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 ha.